like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. All right, everybody, welcome to the Living Hope live agency call. I couldn't be more excited for our special guest, Mr. Brad Allen. Uh, just a quick intro on Brad. I'll let him share his story so I'm not stealing too much thunder. But Brad is the number one annuity producer for all of Family First Life, uh, number one advanced market producer. Some of you guys are on here and you're new. Some of you are veteran agents. Maybe you don't even know what an advanced market is. Brad's going to give us a breakdown of what it is, how you can do it how you can take advantage of it, and really what you can do to take advantage of our current bread and butter here with Family First Life with this incredible add-on of advanced market. So I'm excited. You know, Brad, he is on track to either in July or August, I can't remember which one, help over 200 families personally on his own pen. So I would definitely listen up. I would grab a pen and paper. I'd take some notes. I'd turn your camera on because people with their cameras on we're taking notes or paying attention. People with their cameras off are typically like asleep on their couch. I don't know which one you are. I'm not here to judge, but I know if you got your camera on, you're teachable and you're ready to learn. So Brad, how we doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us, Brad. If you could just give us real quick, um, your background, your story, how you found Family First Life, and then kind of close that out with why Family First Life. Yeah, sure. So I got my license in, um, I believe it was November of 2016. And I spent like six months at a couple practice companies. They're really big and successful. I, I wasn't. I went um, about a year and a half without writing a policy. That should like get some, like, <laughs> I'm not a quitter. Okay, so think about it. Everybody on this call going a year and a half without writing a policy. So I'm either um, stupid or, or uh, just like I don't quit. So um, I came to Family First Life in springtime of 2018. I wrote my first policy July 15th of 2018. And for the first six months, so I helped 19 families in my first three weeks. And that was... You would think that would be good. It really wasn't. I thought that I could turn it on and turn it off whenever I wanted to. That's really not how it works. You kind of just turn it on and you break the knob and you throw it in the ocean. I didn't know that when I first started. So I only did help about 80 families in my first six months. And going into 2019, Matt Smith, some of you probably know his name, Matt Smith called me on Valentine's Day of 2019, and he said, hey, I think you could actually be pretty good at this, but you're going to have to figure out what your distraction is and fix it. And my distraction was drinking. I didn't drink to like celebrate or, you know, like a pity party. I you know, I, I would drink every single day just enough where it was my distraction. And so I stopped. I stopped drinking, um, well, Valentine's Day 2019. At that point, we were still tracking where you were in the whole country, okay? And I was number 106. And I set a goal to get inside the top 100. And I did by about July. And then I said, well, I wonder if I could get inside the top 50. And I did by about October. I ended up number six in 2019. And that was uh, 515 families in my first full year. But I really took, you know, a couple months off because I was being a knucklehead. In 2019, I lost my only son to suicide on, on December 12th. 2019. And, and I said, you know, how am I going to get through this? Because this is horrible. And, and no one should have to, you know, bury their own child. I threw myself into work. And I said, if I can do a half a million, I can do a million. Or if I can do 500 families, I can do a 1000 families. So I did, I put it out there. And this, the reason I'm telling you this story is there's always a lesson here somewhere. When you put it out there for everyone to hear, 
now you got to back it up. I use social media and texting everybody in my network as my accountability buddy. You kind of need somebody to hold you accountable. Before anyone had said it out loud, I said that I was going to help a thousand families on my own pen in 2020. I helped 1100 and I ended up number two in the country, number one in advanced markets. And that's what I'd like to talk to you today about is basically um, the only way you lose is if you quit. So don't quit because if you don't quit, the statistics are if you make it through a year, then you do your taxes and you figure out how profitable you are. In most states, you have to recertify every other year. So you get through two years and you pass the test a second time. You get through four years and you're never going to do anything else again. So it's kind of about just surviving long enough to know that you can actually do this. And it's not complicated. What I'd like to talk to you today about is, you know, so whole life and term, that's how you pay the bills, right? That should be at least 75 to 80% of your business should be whole life and term. Now, what's the other 20%? What's an advanced market product? It's basically anything that needs an illustration. <clears throat> so an illustration basically is just showing you how cash value can grow. And it's not scary. It's not something that's really hard. Um, you've got two different types of advanced market products that we do, either indexed universal life or fixed indexed annuities. Both of those require illustrations. They can grow a cash value. They do not go negative. So if you're in the stock market, okay, you can go negative. If you're in an index, you cannot go negative. So that's a huge selling point. When you're sitting in front of somebody that's in the market, perhaps overfunding a 401k, you just say this, stop at the free money. Anything that you were thinking about going over the free money match, like three to 5%, you kick in three, the company kicks in three, take that money that you were overfunding it and put it towards something that has death, disability, and a tax value like in an index universal life, it has death, disability, 401k does not, death, disability, and a cash value that grows without taxation. Okay, 401k money is taxed, IUL money is not taxed. Because te technically when you're taking it out, it's like you're taking a policy loan against yourself that most like 99.9% .9 of the people never intend paying back. So the best kind of money is free money, Jamie. Like happy birthday. It, it was your birthday. So, you know, here's some free money. The next best money is tax free money. That's what we do. We deal in tax free money. Death benefits are not taxed. Money that's taken out of an IUL, not taxed. Then there's tax deferred. That's your 401k, 403b, right? You're not going to pay taxes now, but you're going to pay them when you're in your early 70s. And then there's tax. So free, tax-free, tax-deferred, taxed. And when you say these words in an appointment, they're really powerful because tax-free money is essentially a 30-point bump on your money, right? Because you pay taxes on that. It's, it's, you know, I used to always say 20. Now I say 30. Let me, let me pause there and see if you have another question for me. No, that's awesome. So just on a real basic level, um, let's just talk about what specifically is an IUL and what specifically is an annuity. Okay, sure. So an IUL is an indexed universal life product. So the key term here in both advanced products, IULs and FIAs is the I. It's an index. So, you know, there could be any number of indexes you could choose, but the real popular ones are like S&P 500, you know, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, right? Those are indexes. So the indexed universal life policy has a death benefit because first and foremost, it is insurance. Even though a lot of people go into it for an investment, it's first and foremost insurance. So you have to be able to health qualify into an IUL, okay? So, and it has um, 
living benefits. There's three living benefits, critical, chronic, and terminal. And then there's also cash value that can grow without taxation. It's considered a permanent policy. So there's three types of things you can do in a house. There is, you know, fires and floods, property casualty, homeowners. We don't do that. Then there's PMI, private mortgage insurance. That's the bank not trusting your credit score or your down payment or both. We don't do that. Then there's mortgage protection life insurance. We do that. There's three types of policies we can put in a house. There's term, universal, and whole life. That's it. Term ends, 10, 20, 30 year term, whatever, no cash. It may have living benefits, but there's no cash. And by the way, right around 2% of term policies pay out a death benefit. People either outlive them or they cancel them because they're getting close to outliving them. So would you consider that a permanent is better than term? Well, depends. I would say so. I own four of them, but it's not for everybody. Some people love term, but I really pump up the value of universal because you only need to prove insurability once. It's one and done. It's a permanent policy. People often confuse it with a whole life policy. It's not. It's a one year term. Just like when you were a W-2 employee, they were like, hey, Jamie, it's time to update your um, benefits, usually in the fall, like October, November, because those are all group universal life policies. There's a one year term. If you don't work there, they'll roll you off their books. Why would they pay for your policy? When I'm sitting in an appointment, I always explain it this way. So you've got the group universal life, which has no cash, one year term, that as long as you're there, it'll be there. But when you leave, it's gone. So I don't even consider that yours. If you own one, and I own four, they generate cash. They can, right? So an index universal life is a fantastic product because it's permanent. It's a fixed premium. It'll take you out to end of life. You can overfund it so that extra over the insurance amount goes into the separate account that grows a cash value without risk or tax. And it's just fantastic. That's why it's hard to get into those because the more value in a policy, the harder it is to get into. Now there's two types of index universal life policies. One is level and one is increasing. Now what's the difference between an increasing and a level death benefit? You'll notice that easy solve or level it's the same thing. It means the death benefit never moves. Let's say that, you know, Candy, I'm putting you into a $100,000 Mutual of Omaha IUL Express Easy Solve, 100K. Okay. And it's like $170 a month. And about a hundred of it is towards the death benefit, and the rest goes into the separate account that can grow a cash value without risk or tax, right? Now, the cash value goes up 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars. It's like 30 years down the line. It's got a bunch of cash in there, and then you die. I'm sorry, Candy, I just killed you off. So that money goes back to the company, not to the beneficiary. The beneficiary gets death benefits. If it's an increasing index universal life policy, the death benefit goes up as the cash value goes up. Same thing. I put you into a $100,000 policy. Instead of $170 a month, it's going to be like about $270 a month. Now, why is that? Well, because the insurance company knows it's going to pay a bigger death benefit more than likely when you do pass, Candy. And so because they're gonna to have to pay out more money, they're gonna want more monthly premium. <clears throat> so I own four universals, All guess what? All of them are increasing death benefit because when I die and I don't know when or how that will be, I don't want my cash value going back to the company, I want it going to my family, okay? So when I write index universal life policies, I write my level death benefit with Mutual of Omaha. Why? Well, because it's easy. <laughs> it's really easy. I mean, you don't need an illustration. And guess what? 
time is not your friend. So, so you want to be quick. You, you, you want to be quick. Um, and if it's going to be an increasing um, death benefit, I write foresters. Can you still hear me, Jamie? Yes, we can hear you perfect. Okay. All right. And the reason I write foresters over Mutual of Omaha when it comes to increasing is because when Mutual of Omaha put out their simplified issue index universal life policy, you had to use WinFlex or WinFlex Web. You had a separate tool. It was really clunky, all these DocuSign signatures back and forth, you know, adding time to your um, presentation. Don't do that. You want to be quick. It's like get in, get out, right? The longer things take, the less chance you have of putting a policy in that house. And when it comes to an increasing death benefit on an index universal life, Foresters, same thing. You go into their illustration tool and you click on increasing instead of level and you slide the bar in the lower right hand corner and you show how that cash value grows or you can go at a glance and show a tabular view. It's really powerful when you show somebody it's got debt, disability and a cash value that grows without tax. It's, it's if you find the person that's healthy enough, remember when people see that value is more than price, they will move. The other thing next to value exceeding price to get people to move is keeping it simple and quick. Confused people don't buy. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the prospective client you're sitting with, what's most important to them, what can they qualify for, what can they afford, and then pump up the value. So that's kind of the index universal life. I mean, you can write national life group, you can write Mutual of Omaha. I used to write Accordia or Global Atlantic Financial Group. Um, you know, everybody's got everything. Why do you write one over another? Well, you want to get a policy placed in that house with the least resistance, maximum value as fast as possible. And so that's why I do it that way. Okay. I love it. And who would be a good candidate for an IUL? Because there's so many different scenarios. I mean, we could talk about the self-employed person who has no retirement okay. and they want to create tax-free retirement. We could talk yeah. about the mortgage protection person who's too old for um, a CBO, but the term policy they're Correct. most likely going to outlive. And you know, why right. give the insurance company all the money if you live 11 years on a 10 year term, you know, so right. who, who would you say would be good candidates and good scenarios? I guess the, the most likely scenarios that you've come across that were good IUL candidates. <clears throat> so for, for IULs, um, it's, let's say that it's you, Jamie, what you're 29, you're healthy, you've got a budget, you've got a family, you have a need. I always start off with CBO. It's, and so I, I'm, you know, guarantees are better than non-guarantees. IULs are guaranteed not to lose money, but not guaranteed to make money. Okay. With a CBO, it's just like an ROP, a return of premium, cash back, same thing, right? So I'm, I'm kind of judging as I'm sitting with you, Jamie, are you more of a guarantee to get your money back guy? Or are you more of like, just let it ride, put it on number 11 black? So if the CBO doesn't really like do it for you, I immediately transition to an IUL because I know that they're, they're like, are you in the market? Then I'm like talking to an investor, so to speak. It's like, are you in the market? Nah, you know, I'm in a little Bitcoin. I try to do some day training. It's like, great. I love that. Does any of that have death or disability? I already know the answers to the questions that I ask. It's like, well, what if I showed you something that would have debt, disability, a permanency, and grow a cash value without taxation, which puts you 30 points above the other traditional investments, and it also has death and disability in there. Would that be of interest to you? And of course, you have to be talking to a healthy person. Now, if they're over 60 and they can't get into a CBO, then I'm looking at Forrester's for sure. Forrester's Smart UL goes up to age 75, right? So know your products, know your guidelines, know your ages and your, your you know, build chart and what have you. But if I can put them into 
a, a young, healthy person that doesn't want their money back that's willing to go all in, Mutual of Omaha IUL Express. If they're over 60, Forrester's Universal. And if it's going to be a big premium, like I want to put in three or four thousand dollars a month, then I go with NLG or Accordia because they can go all the way up to 5K a month. I actually did have a guy go into off an internet lead into a 5K a month IUL with Global Atlantic, Accordia, same thing. So you can't break the modified endowment contract guidelines because it's insurance first, but it's kind of like knowing how much money you can stuff into these things, who you're talking to, showing the value, knowing your guidelines, when you would put somebody in Mutual of Omaha versus Foresters versus a National Life Group. And if you don't know, ask Jamie, ask me. I mean, if you're writing things down, here's the test. I know Candy is. My phone number is 480-678-7448. Text me anything and I will let you know. Like, what would you do with this guy? And I'll tell you. I love it. So let's transition a little bit, Brad. So yep. I want to talk about annuities. Now, uh -huh. Brad helped me with my probably third or fourth annuity appointment. It was the first one that Brad and I had done together. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to protect this uh, this nice lady's money. It, she was still 57 working in the school system. It was tied up. Long story short, we couldn't get the money, even though she was ready to make cash transfer right there on the spot. Right. But we couldn't make it happen. But one thing that Brad did is he really educated her um, on what was going on with the market. And it was sad because she had probably a 20% loss over the last two quarters this year, which is crazy. So that means she had a value of about 500,000 and it dropped down to about 358,000 by the time that Brad and I were talking to her, 20% of her retirement gone in a half a year. So let's talk about number one, Brad, what is an annuity and why an annuity in the market that mm -hmm. we're facing right now? And just why are you why are they no brainers for the people you talk to that are eligible? Yep. The, the, the money that they have is eligible to be rolled over into something. Why is it a no brainer right now with what we're experiencing in the world? Absolutely. All right. So um, just for simplicity's sake, remember there's three types of annuities. There's fixed variable and indexed. So fixed doesn't care what's going on in the world. It's going to return the exact same interest rate. Right. And Athene is the company that I write my annuities with, and they have a max rate three, five, seven. Right. So there's time frames. It's kind of like a CD on steroids. Right. A certificate of deposit. You put the money in, it gets a higher interest rate. So it depends, it depends on how conservative you are. Say, you know, Josh, you're pretty conservative put my money in a Folgers coffee can and I'm the only one that knows where it's buried in the pretty conservative, right? The, the next step up from there and you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So, so up from like coffee can in the backyard, Josh would be your bank account, right? 0 0.001 interest, which basically is like a coffee can with FDIC written on it. Pretty much no interest, but it's up to 250K in most banks, FDIC insured. And then after the bank, you've got money market and CD, then you got bonds. Bonds are doing well. Why? Because the market is correcting, right? So when bonds are going up, that means typically people are leaving the market and that's what's driving the yields of bond prices up. And then you have indexing after bonds and then you have the market. So when it comes to a fixed annuity, it's always the same interest returned over a given period. Then variable annuities, you can still lose money, right? Unless you have a, you know, a, a license to do variable annuities, and most people don't. Um, it, it's just people have a negative connotation when it comes to annuities because of variable annuities. People lost a lot of money with variable annuities. My dad, my granddad said, don't go into annuities. They really should have changed the name. But that's why I do say these words in every pre, like the first appointment, 
you know, I'm sitting with somebody and I come across some annuity money, I explain the three different types, fixed, variable, and then what I do. Okay, so what I do is fixed indexed annuities, indexed being the key term. They go up, they don't go down. And remember these words, no risk, no fee, no cap. No risk, no fee, no cap. So what does that mean? No risk of loss. How is it there no risk of loss? It's because they're option contracts, not shares, right? So you only exercise an option when it makes sense. So they go up, not down. How does the company make money? They capture the participation rate at the top of the market. And then they know that you're staying within 10% of account value annually, and they're reinvesting the 90% you're not touching, and they buy in bulk. They get preferred pricing and placement. That's how they make their money, right? It's just like a bank. A bank takes your money and my money, everybody's money, and they have borrowing power. Same with an annuity company. So they've got preferred pricing and placement. So of the three annuity types, we do fixed index. Why does it make sense? Especially right now, okay? So this year, most of my clients have lost approximately 20% of their portfolio. And depending on where you are in your stage of life, that can be devastating. What if you were just about to go into retirement and you couldn't move your money because you were still working there and you watched about seven years of savings go bye-bye in six months and you can't do anything about it. That's this lady that, you know, I, with, I sat with Jamie. I sat with a lady today. She's still working and they won't let her move her money. So, so a lot of people that can move their money want to move their money because they're, they don't want to lose anymore. So how do you know whether it can move? When you're sitting with somebody, however you find it. So where, where do you find them? I found, I found annuity opportunities in final expense appointments, Medicare appointments, internet leads, mortgage protection leads, internet or, or uh, annuity leads. You find them where you find them by doing a really good financial inventory. That's how you actually find them is you ask the silver and the gold question. Silver question is, are you a saver? What's an average bank balance? Any given Tuesday, when you look in the bank, Josh, what do you see? Because you'll be surprised. Some people are sitting on six figures in the bank. And now remember, I just told you how you make money on money, interest. So you're sitting at 0 0.001. I can move you up right next to the market and get a whole lot more return. Why wouldn't you do that? The other way is going to be the golden question. And that's what do you have that acts like insurance, right? That's 401ks, 403bs. Now, if they're already in a 401k and they're working and still contributing, you need to ask this question before you even set up another appointment or get excited about writing an annuity. So Josh, you come across this lady, she's got 600k in her 401k. She's 58 years old, still working, still contributing, still getting the match. And, and she's like, you know, I've lost 20% of my portfolio this year, Josh, can you protect me? You're like, absolutely. But first things first, I need you to ask your benefits coordinator in your HR department, if you can do an in-service distribution, AKA rollover, right? And so, the, so give them the homework assignment and then follow up the next day. I text people in the morning, Hey, Josh, don't forget to talk to your benefits coordinator today about whether you can roll your retirement account so we can protect it, right? You got to stay on top of people because they'll forget. And if, if the benefits coordinator says they can do an in-service distribution or a rollover, then you set that appointment for the next day or the next day after that. Remember, time is not your friend. And then when you sit down with somebody and you do an illustration, remember we just talked about illustration, advanced products need illustrations. You, in your time, you should be playing with illustrations. I don't know, maybe I'm just a geek. I love playing with illustrations. I'm mean, free time. I run illustrations for fictitious clients to see how much money I can stuff in there, see what index is performing the best. I mean, if I come across this certain profile, this is definitely where I'm putting them. Always being a student of my craft, learning more about taxation, new laws that are coming out, geopolitical issues. I mean, I listen to Bloomberg all day driving around in between appointments because I want to be informed. 
when you walk into an appointment and you feel confident, confidence is sexy. I was telling you straight up, when you walk in, it's like, it's just not my first annuity or it is my first annuity. Either way, people will pick up on that. So you need to just walk in with confidence, knowing that you have an entire team of people behind you to help you. First thing is finding the money and then explaining that indexing goes up, not down, no risk, no fee, no cap. I love it. Thank you so much. So I want to just kind of bring it back to basics here as we start to close this out before we get into some Q&A from the audience. Um, we're talking about beginners yep. here who are going to find, they're going to ask the silver, yep. they're going to ask the gold question, they find some money. Yep. What is the best way to transition and set that appointment? What's the word track? And do you do it right there when you find the money? Or do you wait for a different time to bring that back up? So I don't do one sit closes. I have, and they typically roll right off the books because people get buyer's remorse and they're like, that guy was so convincing. What did I just do? But I don't wait more than a week to set the follow-up appointment. So the first thing is finding the money. And the second thing is making sure you can roll the money. And that's, you know, an orphan 401k is the perfect candidate or money just sitting in the bank. Uh, non-qualified money. You can't and mix Br money. Brad, real quick, not to cut you off, but if you're sitting yep. in a final expense or a mortgage protection appointment and you're in the middle yep. of writing a mortgage protection policy, yep. do you finish what you're doing or do you stop yep. and talk all about the money? So so when you find money, you you finish what you're there to do, whether it's Medicare or mortgage protection or final expense. You always, you don't want to do a bait and switch. It really looks bad. You don't, you don't want to like jump the broom, so to speak. So finish what you started and, and um, identify whether or not you can actually move the money. And if you can, then you set the follow-up a day or two later. You don't want to push it out too far because again, time is not your friend. So you want to set your follow-up and it's a two sit close. When you come in for that second appointment, you're writing an application, okay? You're going to run an illustration, and if you need help with illustrations, the advanced market sales team, um, they can turn around an illustration in a day. They're very fast at turning around an illustration, and you really shouldn't need their help for an illustration. They're really easy to run. You need to be in good standing with the theme, and just call a theme. Do I have a writing code that's in good standing? Okay, so you want to make sure that you can actually write the annuity. And here's another thing I do, Jamie, between the first and second appointment is I give them a homework assignment. When I know the money can move, I give them a homework assignment. I say, go out to FIABenefits.com. So that stands for Fixed Indexed Annuities Benefits.com, FIABenefits.com. There's seven reasons why people go into FIAs. And I will know how serious they are when I come back to the second appointment, if they can even recite one of the seven reasons. The first one is so that you don't participate in a down market to outlive your money. Number one concern in retirement. Awesome. I love it. So Brad, you and I obviously have developed a relationship and this is something that you're helping me with to really expand um, my offering here with, uh, you know, selling insurance to bring more value to my current clients that I already have to go back for reviews, but also to, you know, be more confident in finding the money. Now, I'm confident enough in the relationship that we're developing here that I want to kind of offer the same deal that you offered to me to the rest of my team yeah. here. Um, okay, you want me to so explain that? Yeah, I would love for you to explain it. And I'd love for you to explain why you do it the way that you do it. So I want to just preface with, you can have somebody help you write an annuity like what Brad did for me. So Brad jumped up. It was very simple, guys. I did the appointment. I sold a big IUL mortgage protection policy to a 57-year-old woman. I found the money. I was naive enough to not know that she couldn't move the money. I didn't know that. So I learned my lesson. Now, next time, I'm going to make sure I ask if she can move the money before I set yep. the appointment. But Brad got on Zoom. He ran an illustration. And we went through. And he did the whole thing. Now, when you can split a commission for an annuity, yeah. which is pretty cool. So it can be any percentage. Now there's some people in family first life that they'll say, Hey, you found the money. Hey, just cut me in 10%. I'll give you the 90. I'll do the presentation for you. Brad does it a little bit different. And at first it might shock you, but I love why he does it the way that he does it, because it makes you hungry to learn this, which 
the other way, I wasn't very hungry to learn it because I got to keep 90% of the commission. So Brad, right. please talk about how you do it, why you do it. And if you could have the number one annuity producer helping you write your first couple annuities and learning at his feet, I would do that. So I, I would love to hear that what you'd be willing to offer to our group here, Living Hope. Sure, sure. So for the first 10 annuities, I take the 100% of the commission. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke. No, it's a 50-50 split. So I don't do the 10, 20, 30 thing. When I started, I split every deal for the first three. And then it was like, ouch, why am I keep leaving so much of my commission on the table? It really incented me to learn my craft. And I did really fast. So the first one I wrote and I split was 567,000. And when we got to the point where you like put in the second writing code, I looked over to my upline and I said, hey, I need your writing code. And he's like, dude, this is a really big one. I said, well, I'll just write a bunch of big ones. Well, so it did incent me when I left 567 on the table to take it into half. The second time I was way better. I was paying attention. The first time all I was was just, you know, watching him do the application on a on an opportunity I had found. So it's like, I would rather get half of something than all of nothing. That's the way I always looked at it. I would rather get half of something than all of nothing, but I would rather get all of something than only half. So my second one, I paid even more attention and it was only like $130,000 opportunity. I wish that would have been the first one, but whatever. And then by the third one, I really didn't need the help, but I was still a little like, I, I want the training wheels. And after that, I said, hey, I'm not splitting anymore, but I'm still going to call you and you're going to answer my phone call. And it's like, oh, of course I will. Right. And so it's like, what did that do for me? That took me from knowing nothing about this stuff to knowing pretty much everything I need to know to be really good at helping families protect and grow their retirement funds because I didn't want to lose half my commission anymore. So when I see people doing like, you know, 10, 20, um, you know, 10, 90, 20, 80 splits, there's really not much incentive for you to learn what you're doing because it's just like the price of doing business. You just give away 20%. You're, you're going to continue to miss opportunities because you're not actually getting better at what you do. So if you're going to bring me in, it's going to be a 50-50 split. But here's the other thing. My wife, she's on the call. She's the pretty one. Her name's Patty Allen. She does all the back end processing. So that's where it actually gets really sticky. Writing the app isn't that hard. Once you see what you're looking for and you write them, they become like I'm writing one a week, basically. You, you'll get to the point where you're seeing them everywhere and you're writing them all the time. It's the, it's the sales trail that can really knock you sideways. And we take care of that part for you. So if you're splitting a deal with me, it's not like, hey, thanks, good luck, I hope it funds. No, we're making sure that the money actually moves, the policy gets put in place, and the delivery receipt is signed. That's the majority of the work, and that part we do. Now, if you're not bringing me in, you can still bring Patty in, but she's not free. That would be 500 bucks a pop. And trust me when I tell you, I've done... A lot of these, that's cheap to make sure that you got it written, but it actually issues. That, that funding piece, that's where a lot of them will go sideways. And so, I, you know, if I'm going to be running an appointment with you guys, <clears throat> you'll get a lot of training. It'll be I drive, you watch, and then you drive, I watch. And then you're driving solo with the bat phone. It's like, hey, man. I don't know what this field means. I forgot, right? And it's like, okay, yeah, it's yes or it's no, right? And then once it's written and approved, then they go for funds transfer. That's where Patty gets involved and that's where it can be a real sticky wicket. And she, boy, I'm glad she's on my team because I would not want to go up against Patty. No, she's on our team. So re real quick, and I appreciate so much you'd be willing to teach and mentor and you know help them learn how to do this because it's so powerful and it's something that for me, I'm very determined to, to learn this year. It's just the next level. Um, talk about just ballparks. I know we're not going to talk exact numbers, but ballpark sure. commission 
on an annuity yep. because it works differently than an advance. Yep. You guys, in advance, yeah. if I sell an $83 a month policy to Miss Mary, it's about $1,000 in the annual premium. I take my yep. commission rate 110%, about right. 1100 bucks, 75% advance up front. I get about 850, you know, and yep. then the other, you know, 10, 11, 12 month, I get the rest of the 25%. So how does an annuity work when they transfer $500,000? What does that look right. like? So, so with advanced products, um, so IULs, you get paid on the insurance, not the monthly premium. Don't forget that, right? So you sell a big IUL, you're getting paid on the insurance. If they're 23 years old and it's a million dollar IUL at 500 a month, but the insurance is only 67 bucks, you're getting paid on the 67 bucks. So don't forget that on IULs, you get paid on the insurance, not the monthly premium on FIAs. Just figure it's about 5%. So you, you get 5.25 when you start, and then you can go all the way up to 8% depending on age and product. But the more you sell, the higher your commission. But so if you're, if you're selling a, a, a $500,000 fixed index annuity, like a performance elite 10 plus from Athene, 500,000, so 10% of that is what shows up on the leaderboard. That would be a $50,000 sale, right? You, you wrote one app for the week and it was a $500,000 annuity. And so you post a 50. It's like, wow, Brad's really killing it. Well, I only wrote one app and it was a half a million, but I, I you know, it posted as 50K. What you get paid is 5.25. So 5.25 would be about, what, like $26,000 on a $500,000 annuity. Now, the average annuity size is 138,000. Some are smaller, some are bigger, but the average is 138. But here's probably one of the most important things that I'll tell you about an index annuity is if you don't find one in your first like six months, your chance of finding them drops dramatically. Because when you're starting out, you should be focused on term and whole life, right? Bread and butter. You got to pay your bills. You need to get your confidence up. But if you are not open to the idea of, it, of writing advanced products, I've watched this for years. People just stop looking. They stop seeing them. They could be right in front of their face. Hey, I've got a million dollars, Jamie. Would you protect this for me? Yeah, you know, um, shoot, I'm late for an appointment, I'm going to go ahead and I'll get back to you on that, right? You get afraid of writing them. Don't be afraid. So I'm just saying, if you want to get into this stuff, time's not your friend. Don't get distracted and say, I'm going to be Mr. Advanced or Mrs. Advanced Markets because you'll go broke. You need that, that, that heartbeat, that constant drumbeat of term and universal and, and, and whole life to pay the bills, but keep your eyes open for the FIAs because that's the chunky money and that's how you skip the line and you get into the Hall of Fame red jacket inside of six to nine months. 90 or like 87% of Hall of Fame people have written an indexed annuity. Doesn't mean you have to. I, I've hit Hall of Fame without advanced products every year, but I, don't want to stop at just 400 families in a year. I want to run up the score, right? Why not? And I, I'm totally that person. I've never written or funded an annuity. I've, I've, I've taken a couple swings, honestly, not very seriously. I think the one we did was my first serious swing. Right. Um, right. I've never written an annuity. So now imagine to take it from, you know, helping, you know, 500 families in a year to with the amount of families I sit with, you know, helping a yeah. thousand families in a year just by trying by swinging and you know every now and then you're going to hit one out of the park i have not yet had that happen but it's something that you're i'm exactly the person that you're talking about who yeah. i stopped looking i would ask yeah. people the following question i'd move on just right move on. I, i've seen a million dollars sitting on the on the financial inventory and i said well i just i got my you know four or five thousand i'm out of here and never right. came back never even tried, never try to set another appointment. Um, so I, I am that person. I know there's a lot of people on here who've been that person too, or you skip the question entirely because it's intimidating. Right. Yeah. So this stuff is really easy, you guys. Um, and the more you do it, the easier it becomes. I would say find the money, 
give me a call, send me a text message. I'll see if it actually is an We'll split it. And then when you feel the pain of the split, you're like, okay, I'm good. Actually, one was enough for me. I got it. I'll take it from here, right? You're not beholden to me. I want you to write more advanced products. This stuff is not that complicated. And I'll show you what products, how to pitch them, how to fund them, what indexes to use. Um, and remember that you get basically a nine month small business loan on life policies. Well, it's the same with advanced markets. On the index universal life, same thing, nine month advanced. On the annuity, they give you all the money that you're ever going to get right away. And it can charge back. And an annuity charge back is, if you think it's a scary roller coaster to have a charge back on a term product, it's a way scarier roller coaster to have a, a, a charge back on an annuity. So if it makes it six months, only half the annuity commission needs to be paid back. After a year, there's no opportunity for a charge back. But annuities do charge back, but they only charge back at maybe like a 2% clearly under five like life is somewhere between 20 and 30 chargeback ratio annuities is like under five it's pretty rare but still you don't want to get like a 10 or fifteen thousand dollar commission run out and buy a car have them charge back and it sinks you so just be smart with your business and you know ask a lot of questions i love this stuff if it doesn't show i mean I seriously love this stuff. You guys can blow up my phone. I don't care. I mean, I just love, love, love doing this stuff because this is a huge deal to people. When you work your whole life to save up your nest egg and then it gets obliterated by the market when it could have been protected. So Jamie, you, you didn't act on opportunities. It was the same with me. I had 72 annuity opportunities when I went to Sean Ruggiero and I said, hey, I've been saving these things. What should I do with them? He's like, oh my God, what are you doing? Those are dead. There's no opportunity. You, some of these are three or four months old. You need to act on it and if you want to. But if you want to, it's really not that hard to get it down. I love it. Thank you so much, Brad. We really appreciate it. Um, I think a good way to close this out, just because we've been on here for almost an hour, just give us a couple of basic word tracks for someone who doesn't know much to be able to pivot to get a statement and to be able yep. to, because, so I remember I, I had a conversation with Matt Smith and Matt Smith yep. goes, how the heck did you hit Hall of Fame without ever writing an annuity? I'm like, I have no idea. He goes, have you ever tried? I go, yeah, I tried one time. And he goes, well, how did you try? I go, I asked somebody if they'd ever heard of an annuity. And he goes, that is the right. worst pitch on an annuity I've ever heard in my life. You just ask them right. if they've had an annuity. I was like, yeah, that's, that's it. And so what would be your basic right. word track where you're not giving away, you know, you're giving them yep. the trailer. You're not giving them the presentation because yep. sometimes it's really easy right. to, to pause in the middle of financial inventory. Have you ever heard of an annuity fixed indexed when the market goes up, this and that, yep. you don't lose at the bottom. You know, you just don't know. What <laughs> right. you know. What's, what's right. a good word track for someone who doesn't know anything to be able yep. to set a second appointment without giving away the details of the movie. Yep. So, so I say this in every house when I come across, um, annuity opportunity money, like money in the bank or 401k or an IRA or something, right? So you find it in the financial inventory. When you find it, I always ask this question, does the market make you nervous? Okay. And most people are not investors because an investor needs to be willing to lose the investment. Most people are savers. They don't want to lose their money. And so when I ask you, hey, Jamie, does the market make you nervous? And you say, yes, it does. It's like, well, I actually specialize in protecting and growing retirement funds. Not today, but why don't you grab a statement and I'll be back in a couple of days and I'll show you how you can protect and grow those funds. No risk, no fee, no cap. That always, like, that, like, always gets the interest. And if you get the second appointment, you're writing an application. 
it's always a two sit close. Don't do a one sit close. Don't do a three sit close. It's a two sit close. So here's a very common thing that I've gotten that I think has deterred me because I didn't feel like I had uh, enough confidence. They go, well, we're really happy. We've got a financial advisor. He's a family uh -huh. friend. We're just, we're confident. We're just going to stick with him. So we're good. So what, yep. when you're brand new and you say, Hey, you, you say the line perfectly. Hey, just go grab yep. me a statement. I'll be back in a couple of days. Well, Hey, Brad, actually we've got a family friend, you know, we're just, mm -hmm. he, he's going to move us around. You know, we have some options. We'll definitely talk to him, even though they probably haven't right. talked to him in a year, you know, they're right. watching their statements go down. What do you say to right. somebody who says they trust their financial advisor? So I hear that a lot. I do. Um, and sometimes it's not a financial advisor. It's just a family member that they want to bounce an idea off of. As soon as there's three people in the discussion, you, the prospective client and a third party, especially a financial advisor or a broker that would have some skin in the game, they would be losing some fees. You're basically dead in the water, just so you know like 90% of the time, you've got no shot. Because people fear change. They don't understand this. It's the devil they know versus the devil they don't. Okay, so you can like keep pecking away at it. But the chances of you changing their mind to move their money when somebody else is really who they're delegating authority to for risk, your chances are really slim, but you can still do it. And, and this is what you would say. Okay, so Jamie, um, I, I, I totally agree that you should bounce this off of your um, friends, family, you know, financial confidant, whoever. I just have one request. Ask them if they can guarantee that you won't lose any more money. Because if they can't guarantee you won't lose any more money, then we need to sit back down again and we need to do it soon. Have you looked at the market? You just said it makes you nervous. Time's not your friend, right? So because I already know the person I'm competing with can't say guarantee. This is what I used to do before I got the family first life. They said, take the word guarantee out of your vocabulary right now today. Never again, no guarantees right? We can say guarantee because it's insurance. They cannot say guarantee. And then if they say, well, he came back and he said he can do that. It's like, interesting. So I wonder why he didn't say that to you before you lost 20% of your portfolio. Are you sure you're talking with the right guy? Okay. Right. That's good. That, that'll be, that'll happen as well. It's like, oh, he's got that. It's like, really, does he work for the number one index annuity company in the country named Athene? Because if he does, you should go with them. If not, I don't know why you wouldn't go with number one. Because a lot of people, they have their money in, you know, Orphan 401k, or maybe they have their money in Edward Jones, you know, yep. whatever it is. But, yep. you know, again, can, can any, so here's a question. Well, my financial guy does annuities, uh -huh. you know. How how would you overcome that? Would you go back to hey, well, there's these three different types of annuities? Do you know which one? Sure. How, how would you overcome that? Yeah, I, and I hear that a lot. It's like, oh yeah, um, I already have an annuity, or um, the guy says they have an annuity. It's like, well yeah, annuities have been around since the Roman times. They're not a new idea. You know, it's a paycheck for life. Social Security, pensions, those are annuities, paycheck for life, right? So there's lots of annuities out there, just like there's lots of, you know, cars and all kinds of things. But, you know, let's go to an objective third party. Why don't you pick a good one? Because if you look up the press on a theme, they win awards every single year voted on by their peers. So you could go with number two or three or 23, but I'm local. I work with the number one indexed annuity guy in the country representing the number one company with the number one product. So you could go with something other than number one. I don't know why you would. That's good. That's, that's confident. I love it. Fantastic. So just any last words of wisdom for somebody who wants to add this into the repertoire, uh, somebody that is, is afraid to like, I'm talking to me here. You can even just give me the advice you know, any <laughs> sure. of encouragement to keep searching for annuities. Yeah. 
So um, first things first, you wanna make sure that you have a writing code in good standing with the theme. Number two is you wanna do a thorough financial inventory to find the opportunity. The person that asks the best questions wins. And when you find it, you set a follow-up appointment within two or three days and you immediately text me and then we have a conversation and I can help you vet it. And then we just like crank on it. I mean, it's really not that hard. After a couple bites of the apple, you'll say, hey man, I'm good. And then you're on your own at 100% commission. I love it. Can you list your phone number one more time, Brad? Yeah, 480-678-7500. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. I know a lot of people learned some things they didn't even know were available here with Family First Life. And guys, just again, disclaimer, Brad writes a lot of simplified issue life insurance. A oh, lot. yeah. So what would you say ballpark, um, just simplified issue life insurance, not advanced markets that you wrote? Right. In, you yeah, know, it's going to be year. over 600 over 600 families a year, non-advanced markets, at least 600 a year, no advanced markets. So it's just an add-on guys. And it's a huge service and something that'll help create a client for life. So thank you so much, Brad. Really appreciate yep. you. Everybody have an amazing night and we'll talk to you guys next week.